Hi, it's me, Reynard Wilson, and MC Toon has invited me back to talk about my favourite subject, a man called Mark Steele. He's the inventor, scientist and whistleblower from the town of Gateshead. Well, actually, the last bit is true. He really is from Gateshead, and that is a 100% real town in the northeast of England. But everything else he says, I would say, is highly suspect. Today, we're going to listen to one of his important and uh, educational lectures on the subject of power engineering. Uh, who knew that Mark knew so much about such a diverse range of topics, especially something as obscure as the power distribution system of the British national grid? Energy in air has to end up somewhere. All right, so the energy, unfortunately, if you've got all the grid infrastructure, you've got a lot of bare earths. So where you'll get this energy in air, it'll be picked up in an earth. The earth then takes it back to a breaker. The breaker sees it as, a, as an earth leakage, and then you'll break out. If two things happen at approximately the same time, is it proof that one thing caused the other thing? For example, if there were forest fires in Korea. In the same week as Korea's 5G network was switched on, is that proof that 5G caused the forest fire? Or is it possible that the forest fire caused 5G? Yeah, just think about it. They happened at the same time. So how do you know that a load of burning stuff didn't cause a telephone network to spontaneously appear. Huh? Think about it. However, what we what we witnessed in South Korea with a switch on a 5G was this, the, the, the actual uh, transformer boxes, you know, the dielectric prop that you have in transformer boxes. So we saw transformer boxes actually bursting into flames. So the whole grid went down and it set fire to five separate cities. It was April 2019. They said it was a forest fire. We actually got the evidence, the early media coverage, it was covered up pretty well, but the earlier media coverage was it was transformer boxes that were just exploding. What a rich life Mark must have lived to become so wise in so many subjects. We've just heard him lecture about the, the difficult and interesting subject of power systems distribution engineering. And now he's going to talk to us about nuclear waste reprocessing, a subject that perhaps one might normally expect to, vote, uh, to devote a lifetime of study in order to become an expert. But here's Mark, who as far as I can tell, has never worked in any field related to nuclear energy, who seems to know an awful lot about the dangers of uh, 5G in proximity to nuclear storage facilities. You have a lot of nuclear reactors and a lot of storage of um, spent fuel rods. Spent fuel rods are uh, normally in cooler pools. Cooler pools, unfortunately, well, uh, you know, they normally run off the grid. Uh, it is just absolutely catastrophic if you were to lose the the, the capability to keep those pools cool, where They'll evaporate the water off. The rods then talk to each other. They get extremely hot. I'm sure that's exactly how it happens. The spent fuel rods from the nuclear power stations talk to each other. And then having spoken to one another at great length, they decide to get a bit hot. And if the power to the spent fuel pool has been cut off because somebody in a nearby city decided to install a 5G network and then switch it on. Who knows what may happen? Well, Mark knows what will happen. Let's have a listen. Punch a hole through the bottom of the, 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 uh, the pool, hit the water table. It's good night, God bless everybody. There's nobody will survive it. Kind of bleak, isn't it? We're all going to die if what Mark says is true. What can we do? How are we going to not die? Well, as usual, our buddy Mark has a plan. 
and he's going to tell us how to lead the way in this fight, the fight to end 5G and in doing so prevent almost certain nuclear Armageddon. Our, our win to, uh, to stop a 5G must be uh, deployed uh, in a place not far from me. It was during the full lockdown, so you weren't allowed out of the house. We got to where the mast was. Uh, we then remonstrated with the guys. As it happens, the ex-military, so I was having a conversation with them. These telephone installers may have been former military people, but Mark isn't. Mark has never served in any military function. He has never worked for the Ministry of Defence. And despite what he claims, he has no expertise as a scientist or engineer working in a military facility. So I suspect that any conversation he might have had with these people was one of extreme bafflement as a man who clearly knows nothing about the subject of telephone engineering attempted to spark up a conversation with these telephone installers. As I said, look, he's a fit in a 5G master when it's not 5G, we promise definitely not 5G. Anyway, I opened the back of the van, it was, back of the van, it was a 26 directional weapon system 5G. And I went, it's, that's 5G. And he went, it's not, it's not, I promise. So Mark opened up the back of the van and there he saw the smoking gun. If the smoking gun could be in the form of a bunch of telephone transmitter antennas, that were waiting to be installed. And they were genuinely, they were genuinely, they'd been told it wasn't 5G what they were installing, uh, but it was. And I said, look, you're just a mushroom. They understand that from a military aspect, you know, need to know basis only. I said, do you really think they would tell you you were fitting a weapon system? Anyway, the police come, they were pretty upset. And I said, this asked us what we were doing out. And I said, well, we're investigating a crime like you should be, and you need to arrest these chaps. There's a reason why Mark refers to himself as being very expert. It's because in addition to power systems distribution engineering, nuclear fuel reprocessing, and being a, an expert at identifying energy weapons in the back of a telephone systems installation van, he's also now a master of criminology, able to inform Northumbria police about who they ought to be arresting, in this case, the telephone installation workers, and who they shouldn't arrest, in this case, Mark Steele, despite the fact that he's admitted to have been uh, defying the curfew in order to harass those workers. Uh, what an expert man he is. So let's wonder, did, did the police actually follow his instructions? Anyway, they didn't arrest him and everything would just, would just uh, fill it away, but that shows how the industry themselves People in the industry are being told it's not 5G, and it is. If there's anyone now who doubts the danger we face by switching on 5G, please just remember how awful it would be to uh, pour a glass of water only to find it contaminated with spent nuclear fuel. And why would that be? It's because your greedy 5G phone caused the local transformer boxes to explode, which in turn damaged the spent fuel storage pools, which caused a massive radiation leak. And this will happen every time a 5G phone network is activated. Friends, you've been warned. Next time you find yourself poisoned by radiation, please remember that you heard it here first on the mind of steel.